what to do with that dough Let the chef show you You need to know What to do with that dough Hey guys, welcome to the Need to Know Pod I'm your host, Chef Sahara And I'm so excited to uh, finally start this pod Very first episode So I'm excited to have you guys get to know me I want to get to know some of you guys and um, I'm here to talk about all things in the culinary world, more specifically baking. So I am a professionally trained pastry chef. And all that means is that I went to school right, for pastry arts. But I also, um, I like to think I'm a good cook. So I will be talking some things culinary. Uh, so just want to uh, share all things culinary. So I definitely have a love for the culinary world. Um, so before we get started into our really first episode and start tackling stuff, let me just tell you a little bit about myself and why I think you need to know, right? Things I think you need to know about me, right? So again, as I mentioned, I'm a pastry chef. Um, I, I, well, let's take it back. I started out cooking just growing up. I always cooked. Right. And I do like to eat. So let me just say that. So just wanted to always cook. Um, don't ask me where I got it from, but always uh, was in the kitchen uh, and just always cooking. I have two sisters, so we had to take turns cooking. <laughs> and I noticed that I was doing a lot of the cooking. So just uh, getting recipes from, you know, my aunt, my my grandmother, my mo- my mother, my, her friends. So, and just always practicing, practicing, practicing. Um, so, as I got older, I just continued to cook, cooking for people's functions, and I like food, and I like that when when you're around food, it brings people together. So, I really do like really really appreciate everything about the food, how it brings people together. And anytime there's a function, I'm bringing some kind of dish. I love the way people react when they taste my food and now when they taste my big goods. So, so as I, um, uh, just years and years. So now at this stage I'm grown, right? So now as a child, I like to cook, but now I'm grown, fully grown adult. (laughs) And I, always cooked, like I said, and always had visions of maybe one day I'll open up a restaurant or something like that. Um, So I figured, let me perfect my craft and go to culinary school. Well, the first attempt, uh, just looking into it, it wasn't the right time for me. It wasn't the right time. So, uh, you know, we had the explosion of the Food Network. When I was a young girl, Food Network wasn't out, of course, but now that they have the Food Network, um, so all these shows are coming on. And as time went by, they had better shows, right? So now they have all these, um, I watch baking shows, back-to-back baking shows. And specifically, there was an episode of a Bobby Flay throwdown with like a cake decorator, I believe it was, and uh, Duff Goldman, he did Ace of Cakes. And I decided to, well, not I decided, that was the moment I realized that you can go to school for pastry arts. I didn't realize that was a thing. Um, even though I cooked, I just never thought about it. I never considered baking. I always thought, well, you cook. Never, ever considered baking. Um, I couldn't even bake a box cake, truth be told. Um, so it just it just didn't dawn on me. So fast forward, uh, the day I turned... Uh, on my birthday, I turned 35 and I went to culinary school. I went to culinary school as a full-time mom, wife, employee. So it was a lot. And I went to school full-time, but, um, I will tell you, there's nothing like following your dream, your passion, because when I walked in that door of the, the culinary school, and just so you know, I went to the Art Institute of New York. It was formerly the New York restaurant school here in New York city. Now I believe uh, um, that building has the, I feel like it's the Jackie Robinson Museum, if I'm not mistaken, but nonetheless, went to culinary school and just, I was so amazed. First, I was amazed at how many young people were in there, but I went to school at night because I was working during the day and there was, it was people my age at night. (laughs) 
for people my age there at night going to culinary school. So, but nonetheless, just seeing all the big equipment and com the commercial equipment, like you only see on TV or, so it just was a dream come true for me. I never missed not one day uh, going to school. I, I practiced the things that I learned and it was, it was so much information and like so many eye opening moments that I just, I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with it. So while I was in culinary school, I continued to practice, practice, practice. Whatever we learned in school, I would come home and practice. And if it didn't work out, I would go ask the chef, like, like I tried it and it didn't work. So I, that's one takeaway I had. If you have the opportunity and whatever it is that you're doing, if you have the opportunity to to get knowledge from somebody who has the experience, definitely do that. Definitely, definitely do that. Um, I took full advantage of it. I even started selling cakes. <laughs> I even started selling cakes while I was in culinary school, just practicing, honing my skill. Um, so let's fast forward to graduated. I'm still working and just was honing my skill at home, at home in my, in my kitchen. And my husband built a, uh, my kitchen for me down in the basement. He built out a kitchen for me in the basement and I just was practicing, 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 still selling cakes, you know, and I had a function come up, uh, here in New York city. It's called the circle of sisters. Now it's changed quite a bit, but it was a two, a two day event. Um, over the weekend and just so many people were going to turn it out. So, so many people. So I made a decision right there. Like I'm, I'm going to do this event. I'm going to have all these baked goods because one thing that I'm a, pa I am extremely passionate about is showcasing different desserts that I didn't know existed in school. I was making things that I know people in my community would never taste, ever taste, you know? Um, or just not accessible because it's not in our community, right? Um, and just something as simple as macaroons. I'm not saying our people don't know what macaroons are, but I just know that you can't just walk down the block and get a macaroon. Uh, and I'm not talking about a macaroon that's sold in like a big box store. But I, um, I would say rugula. And as I would make these, these uh, pastries in school, I would bring them home to... My family, of course, but as as I was traveling from school, I also worked in the subway system. So as I would uh, get on a train and and go home, and I would see the different clerks, it was just so much stuff every day. I would give out the stuff, so people started um, telling me how good this stuff was. So like rugula was something that I made that got a really really good response. So that was one of my um, items that I was known for was my rugula. Um, and I had never heard of rugula before. I didn't know what it was. And just so you know, it's a, it's a Jewish pastry with a fruit filling. So started making rugula, just, just so many different things. So I knew these are the kind of items I wanted to bring to this big event held at the Javits Center here in New York City. So did that. The, the turnout was amazing. I, I employed my friends. I had a team. We was at that table and we really, really like it was so successful. And that was the first time that I realized that I could make um, really good money selling big goods. <laughs> but so I did that three years in a row. Um, and, you know, in 2016, I decided that I wanted to have a pastry shop. And that's what I did. I opened up a pastry shop here in, uh, more specifically, Staten Island. And um, that's a whole nother podcast in itself about the experiences <laughs> being the only person selling um, gourmet coffee, uh, as well as gourmet pastries. And if you know anything about Staten Island, you know that it's it has its challenges. <laughs> it has its challenges. Um, I will say Staten Island is the only borough that uh uh trump won yeah so just put that together so staten island was interesting but nonetheless i i i i love the experience out no regrets no regrets so had my shop for four years um met so many wonderful people and the pandemic hit and i opted to pivot from having a brick and mortar to doing it online to becoming a um 
online baking instructor to having a baking membership. So, and just things that I learned along the way is what I feel like people need to know, right? And just my experience as a shop owner, things that I felt like the average person doesn't know. Um, having, having an online community of bakers who, you know, if you ask people, I don't want to say everybody thinks they could bake, but I ran into a lot of people who, who like to bake or bake on the side. And there's some basic fundamental information that they didn't have. Or I just feel like when you have a little better insight on why you do certain things, not just in baking, it, that's how I, that's how I learn. You got to explain to me, why are we doing this? So that's why I, I feel like need to know. What do you need to know about baking? What do you need to know about um, uh, like the culinary world? What do you need to know about food safety? So these are some of the things that I'll tackle. And I may tell you something you may feel like you don't need to know, but I, I may still want to tell you. But so that's that's what made me think of this podcast. And I've been wanting to get it out you know, for some time now, but now, you know, sometimes you need time to get more clarity. So I'm clear, uh, on just, just getting that message out. And also I want people to know that bacon is a, a skill, right? If you need a few dollars, you may want to bake a cake or two, right? But if you, (laughs) right, it is definitely a, 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 a viable skill that you can take with you anywhere. You can take with you anywhere. Um, so I'm just, nobody could ever take that from me. I'm not saying you have to go to culinary school, but if you learn some things, um, some basic stuff, I think that you, you'll do fine in, in the bacon world and bacon can be intimidating. Bacon definitely can be intimidating, but, um, I know specifically I never worked with yeast before I went to school. I just felt like there's no way I could ever work with some kind of yeasted product. But once you understand yeast, now I now I just get, give me the recipe. Give me the recipe and and there's nothing that I won't be able to work with when it comes to yeast. Um I, there's some things that I probably choose not to work with cuz some things are difficult to bake because or make I should say because of the, the, um, how intricate it is, you know, the different steps that are involved, right? It may not just be mix one with two and, and voila. No, some things are very, um, uh, intricate when it comes to making. So, uh, you need to know what to do with that dough. Let the chef show you. You need to know what to do with the dough. So yeah, so that's what the need to know part is. That's how it is. It's me just telling you the things I feel like you need to know. <laughs> and also, so, you know, moving forward um, in uh, the upcoming episodes, know that I want to take some questions from you guys. So send in some baking questions. Um, you can leave it in the comments uh, as well as also on our social media platform as well. But also, uh, if you have recipes that you struggle with, this is something that I'm kind of passionate about, that people are able to put up recipes like just all (laughs) willy-nilly. And some of the recipes aren't good at all. Uh, One of my clients, uh, we were trying to cost out one of her recipes. And when I took a look at the recipe, just the whole process was like insane. Like I couldn't understand where'd you get this recipe from? But if you just know, like I'm baking something I learned how to bake when I was a child, then that's fine. But sometimes once you understand like the technical aspect of it or what's right about it or what's wrong or what method to use, I feel like you'll make better decisions when it comes to using a recipe online. I definitely use recipes online, um, but I know how to decipher a good one from one that's not so good, as well as I'll combine two recipes. I'll take something that's good about one with another one that looks like, you know, that has some good qualities and make it my own. So, um, so yeah, that's that. So definitely, uh, I want to do like a recipe analysis. So if there's a recipe that you're struggling with, send it into me. I can probably tell you like, what I feel like you might be doing wrong. I'll definitely give you some feedback on that. So that's what I'm looking forward to. 
as well as giving you some um, food safety tips. Food safety tips. I think that is so important because I definitely believe that food can should be safe for all, and sometimes it's not. Um, sometimes, as a food consultant, I uh, more specifically food safety consultant. Um, it it just it just I am so incensed that some of these food businesses are food establishments are able to continue to 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 have their doors open and they have C ratings. Um, I don't know about you, but I know I I don't want to eat in a restaurant that has a C rating. But I actually, and this is public knowledge, I can look at the, the their rating and determine why. It's one thing if maybe, um, I don't know, maybe uh, you didn't have, really there's no reason. It's like certain basic stuff. I'm trying to think of a reason why, how I would eat at a C rating. Um, and I wouldn't, but what I'm seeing in places just here in New York, what I'm seeing is, of co- uh, you know, it's expected that some of these places have rodents, right? But you can't be infested. You can't be infested. Um, you have to keep your food at certain temperatures. So all of those things. So we'll get into that, um, during our food safety, uh, um, segment as well. But yeah, so that's just, that's why I feel like that's important to put in there because I want you guys to be safe when you're out eating at these different locations. So with that said, I just wanted to, um, get into, you know, that's what you need to know about Sahara for now. And as time goes on, I will definitely tell you more when it pops up, like, Oh, maybe you need to know that. So (laughs) With that being said, let's jump into what I think is really, really important here, and it's the essential tools. It's the essential tools. Okay, now let's get into some stuff that I really, the first thing I really, really think you need to know, or the second, right? You need to know who I am. You got that. So now let's talk about the tools, the essential baking tools. And I think the tools are really, really important because um, I know growing up, uh, and things have changed. So, you know, I don't hate to keep referencing, you know, when I grew up, but, you know, you go on those experiences. I didn't have all the baking tools. I think there's so many people I know now that don't have essential baking tools because they maybe they don't think about bacon. But if it's something that you're interested in, if it's a skill that you definitely want to learn, just some basic tools, because if you have the right tools, it could be the difference between how your baked good turns out. So these are just some basic tools. I'm just going to go over the basic things to get you started right away. If you want to make a muffin, like th- you can you can make a muffin with the stuff I'm going to tell you. So just some basic tools. Know that um, when you start specializing like in cookie decorating or cake decorating, those are totally different tools that are required. Very separate from from uh, the tools I'm going to go over now. So if you want to know more about that, let me know. And I could definitely go over them, but very different tools. So this is just going to be able to get you started, (laughs) um, and, and allow you to practice and perfect that skill. So let's get started. So the very first tool I think you should have is a kitchen scale, like like this is the first thing that they showed us on day one of culinary school. You need a kitchen scale because it's all about accuracy. Kitchen scales measures weight. So it'll weigh in grams or ounces as opposed to dry measuring cups. Dry measuring cups measures volume. So you definitely want to get yourself a kitchen scale. Um, I can do, I'll definitely do a whole podcast about um, just the importance of accuracy. Uh, But kitchen scales allow us to be more accurate. Professional chefs use kitchen scales. So it allows you to increase and decrease your recipe. But we'll get into that in another part. But if you want to at least follow along with me or you see some chefs, very rarely will you find, I haven't seen, but just in the industry, we use scales. You're not going to find recipes that says one cup it is or two cups of that. All of my professional recipes are in weight. So kitchen scale. Uh, secondly, I think it's uh, really important. You need some kind of mixer. <laughs> you 
do not think you're going to uh, beat everything together. Um, I did teach a cookie class. Uh, and it was, it was for the holidays with a, a bunch of nurses. And yeah, uh, the lady who actually, one of the ladies who actually put the class together, she, she didn't have a mixer, which was fine. Um, but just everything that we, we went over and I gave out a list of the tools you would need. I gave out the ingredients and she did, you know, sometimes people do what they want to do. Right. So, um, long story short, she didn't have a hand mixer. So we were making cookies and you have to cream your butter and sugar. And that's going to be really, really difficult, uh, to do by hand. So just, you need, uh, at least a hand mixer as you start to develop your skills, you may want to get a stand mixer or as you start to increase um, the amount of bacon that you will do. So I love my stand mixer. Um, so yeah, definitely a hand mixer. But as you increase or develop, if you're getting started and you feel like you enjoy this baking thing, then definitely um, invest in a stand mixer. Um, I definitely would say a whisk. Um, that is like non-negotiable. You need a whisk. Um I don't, I don't think I had a whisk growing up, but now that I know how to use one, I use it from everything. Of course, we use it to incorporate air into our eggs or our heavy cream um, or just, you know, blend items together. You can beat your eggs with it, um, but also it, it's great for gravies or, you know, just, just cooking, non-bacon related stuff, but just cooking, it smooths things out. Um, I always use it for a gravy. I always use it, you know, um, I, li I like some grits now. So uh, it, if you want some lump-free grits, get yourself a whisk. Um, what else do we have? Of course, we have our measuring spoons and measuring cups. Measuring spoons is one thing. You definitely need measuring spoons. Uh, growing up, I, I didn't have measuring spoons. I know that for a fact. I know that to me, a teaspoon was the small spoon in a drawer. Uh, and a tablespoon was the biggest spoon, right? Of course, there's so many different si spoon sizes. Um, I just didn't think about it. Uh, I know specifically a recipe, uh, my mother's cornbread recipe that I still use to this day. But it's I, I feel like it called for two teaspoons. I know I was putting too much baking soda in there. I know that for a fact. Because it's just it's just not the same. So definitely get some measuring spoons. Um, now the measuring cups, even though I know I said you should have a scale, measuring cups are good also. Measuring cups, we call them dry measuring cups. They measure volume. So if you want to do a cup of raisins or a cup of rice, so you definitely need measuring cups. I, I do. Um, the one thing I will say that I use my measuring cups for is like my muffins. Muffins are quick to make. You can make muffins, whip them together in less than 10 minutes. At least the, the you know, with the bacon aside, you can whip up uh, uh, muffins in 10 minutes, really. But so you definitely need a dry, uh, dry measuring cups. But what I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know uh, way back when that the, Glass measuring cups, we call liquid measuring cups, really should just be measured for liquids, not for rice. I, I easily can, I can remember just measuring rice growing up in a liquid measuring cup. That's what it was. It was just a measuring cup. So just go figure. <laughs> but I only use liquid measuring cups to measure liquid. Um, but I definitely feel like that is something you should have. Um, what else do we have here? You definitely need a rubber spatula. Love a rubber spatula. Um, uh, all spatulas aren't created equal, but you need a rubber spatula because as you are mixing stuff in your bowls or your mixing bowls, um, you're going to need that spatula to scrape that bowl clean. Believe me when I tell you. Uh, when I thought of spatulas, I thought of the spatula you turn pancakes with. Um, so no, <laughs> uh, you need a rubber spatula and I'll definitely insert the, a picture of that. So you can, um, also I want to say you want to get a heat proof spatula because as you're mixing this stuff, you want your, your, your spatula to be able to stand up against that heat. Um, so I heat up stuff like, 
uh, well, I wouldn't use it for like uh, sugar or syrups or anything like that. But I just know when when stuff is really hot, I find like the cheaper brand um, tends to like uh, not hold up to the heating process and it starts to break off at the ends. Um, so of course you need some baking pans. Uh, that goes without saying. I definitely would recommend starting off with one size. If you are new to baking, maybe like a seven inch, if you're not going to bake a big cake or between seven and nine, I do have seven, eight and nine. I actually have more than that. But what I will su suggest is if you want to learn how to bake cakes, you need at least two of each. I make three layer cakes, so I have three of each. So I have sets of seven inch pans, sets of eight inch pans, um, because I need to bake them all at once, not one cake at a time. So a lot of recipes you'll see, they'll say, you know, two pans, but I like a three layer cake. So I have sets of three, but whatever size you're going to get, just get a set of that pan. You also, uh, what falls under bacon pan, you can get a cupcake pan. If you think you're never going to get cupcake, make cupcakes, then of course you don't need it. But I do like a cupcake pan to have an arsenal, um, as well as sheet pans, sheet pans. I have half sheet pans. I have quarter sheet pans. I have full sheet pans. Um, I don't suggest full sheet pans. I'm just saying what I have, but full sheet won't fit into your oven. But half sheet pans are like absolutely, absolutely a must because if you want to cook cookies, you need a good baking pan. Um, they sell these things in stores, but I do, I'm a firm believer in using quality tools because it holds up to the process and depending on what you have it it's not going to hold up if you get a cheap when i started i had like a cheap cheesecake pan and then over time you know it starts to 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 peel it's not it's not releasing it's not holding up it's just 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 not good so i would definitely recommend um just commercially well, not commercially, it doesn't have to be commercial, but sometimes when you hear commercial tools, you think that it has to be so expensive, but it it, it definitely does not. I, I actually have a bacon supply store, the Sweetness Society store, Sweetness Society store, not the Sweetness Society store, that I sell some of the tools that I feel like you should have. So a lot of these tools, you can go to my site and, and purchase, but if you don't purchase from me, I'm just saying purchase from someplace because I think these tools are a must. Uh, ice cream scoopers, uh, definitely, uh, uh, um, I would say recommend it. I definitely recommend the ice cream scooper because when you scoop out your cookies, when you scoop out that, um, cupcake batter or muffin batter, you know, it's very messy to try to measure each baking cup evenly. The ice cream scoop, and I definitely suggest different sizes of the ice cream scoop per the ice cream scoop. I always call it ice cream scoop, but I guess I better start adding the ER to it. But the ice cream scoopers, like hands down, is one of my, like, I don't know how I can live without it. I use it to mold my cake pops. I use it for um, just everything. Cake pops, uh, if you want to make meatballs, if you want your meatballs to be the same size, get an ice cream scooper. Um, a sifter is great to have. Um, I'll actually insert, like, I'll, I'll insert two pictures of the sifters because the sifter that I was introduced to was from my mother-in-law. I know for a fact, nobody in my family had a sifter, but, um, uh, there's also, you know, they look different in school. We had a really large one that was called the sieve or sieve, sieve, let's say sieve, but, um, and we use that. You can use that um, as well as, but the sifter my mother-in-law introduced me to was the small metal one with the handle that you crank, right? So uh, not so much. I don't I don't use that any anymore, but I still have it. I still have it. I, not anymore. I just won't use that. I will not use that. <laughs> um, and I think this list I have in front of me has eight. I'm sure there's like more. I know I'm, I feel like I'm missing something, but when I think of it, I'll definitely uh, go back maybe in, in, next, in the next episode and show you. But lastly, I highly recommend uh, bakers use parchment paper. Parchment paper is like hands down to me is not optional. 
actually none of these tools are optional, but parchment paper is a must. It's not a tool, but it is, um, I'm going to call it a requirement. The only thing I would say is that when you purchase your parchment paper, try to get sheets of parchment paper. I do not like the parchment paper that's on a roll because what happens is when you break it off, it just keeps rolling up on a pan. So you can get a uh, parchment paper sheet specific to the size pan that you have um, in terms of sheet pans and you use it for your cakes. Use that parchment paper. You cut out cake circles. Um, if you have a seven inch cake, cut out a seven inch cake circle with the parchment paper. Your cakes will come out so easily. It's just not optional. And we use parchment paper from day one, from day one in culinary school. And I, I just will not bake without it. The only thing I bake without parchment paper is my pound cake. Like, there's no way you can use it. So that's the only thing. But every cake that I make has parchment paper. And you use it to line your cake, your sheet pans, your half sheet pans. You never just bake on top of a sheet pan. So to preserve the quality of your pan as well. So, but that's it, guys. That is it. So now you need to know uh, the, the things that you need to know. <laughs> We kind of went over it uh, again. Like you need to know who I am. You need to know about these tools. Clear, really, really, really important. You need to have those tools as a foundation. And then the next episode, we will definitely get into the ingredients because I think there's some important stuff you need to know about the ingredients that will allow you to be able to make better choices when it comes to your recipes or you know the different flours you need, the different sugars. Um, and I think sometimes I take for granted, like, what do you mean you don't know the difference between regular brown sugar or light brown sugar and sugar in a raw? Uh, and some people don't cause they, cause it's not something they think about. So those are some of the things we, I'm going to get into as well as again, if you have a baking question, feel free to drop it on my social media page, need to know pod, as well as send me an email at need to know pod at gmail.com. Um, yeah. And I think that is it. I think that is it guys. So that's it. I hope you have enjoyed this very first episode of need to know pod with me, chef Sahira and feel free. I would love if you guys left a review. Um, if you have your baking questions, yes, submit that. If submit your recipe questions, follow us on social media, um, at need to know pod, um, on YouTube, you can follow me at chef Sahira speaks as well as need to know pod. Um, yeah. And, and make sure you subscribe, make sure you share and tell people about need to know, let them know what they need to know. You need to start listening to need to know <laughs> the need to know pod with Chef Sahara. So, so I'll leave you with this guys. I know baking can be a little intimidating for some, but don't give up. It's all about practice and passion. And with that being said, thanks for watching this episode of need to know pod with me, your girl, Chef Sahara, and I'll see you next time. You need to know what to do with that dough. Let the chef show you. You need to know what to do with that dough. Let the chef show you.